Back to Justice, a new podcast where I'll be covering the stories of true crime cases that have received justice and cases that are still seeking justice. I'm your host, Lindsay. Today, I will be covering the case of George Murdoch, who was murdered at age 58 whilst on shift as a taxi driver. George Murdoch, known as Dodd to his family and friends, was born in Aberdeen, Scotland in either 1924 or 1925. His exact date of birth is not published online anywhere, but due to how old he was when he died, we can assume he was born around these two years. He lived in Aberdeen for the duration of his life. Aberdeen, which is also well known as the Granite City, due to the majority of buildings being made out of locally quarried granite, is the third most populated city in Scotland, and is also referred to as the oil capital of Europe. During the 1980s, the time when this case began, the city had been experiencing the changes in growth that coincided with the oil boom. Aberdeen began its transition from a city dominated by the fishing industry to one dominated by the petroleum industry in the 1970s. This was due to the city's role in developing undersea technology for offshore drilling. Aberdeen is also home to the main heliport that flies workers offshore and a large industrial harbour where it is not uncommon to see large oil boats coming and going. This meant that the city's population was forever changing as a large amount of offshore workers would come and go regularly. Some would stay at local B&Bs, hotels and offshore worker housing whilst others would simply travel back home for a number of weeks until they were needed back on the rigs again. This particular piece of information would become very important in the theories surrounding George's murder. George himself is described by friends and family as being kind and gentle. His hobbies included boating and keeping pigeons. He'd also been very happily married to his wife Jessie for 37 years. On the evening of Thursday the 29th of September in 1983, George Murdoch was working his evening shift as a taxi driver, driving his light blue Ford Cortina. He had previously worked in a factory, but after being made redundant, he found work with a local taxi firm to make ends meet. His wife Jessie was often worried about him working as a taxi driver in such a busy city, especially working late nights, picking up revellers on their way home from the bars and clubs in town. But he assured her that if it ever came to it, He would never try and fight anyone who might want to rob him. He said he would just hand over the money. George was seen at roughly 8.30pm on Queen's Road in the city centre, picking up a male passenger described to be in his 20s with dark hair. George then radioed the taxi office to tell them that he was dropping his passenger off in Peter Cooter, a suburb around eight miles from the city centre. After driving for a short while through the city, George turned onto Pitfoddle Station Road, a short but busy road linking the Garth D area of the city to the North D side area. It is important to add that this area of the city is one of its most affluent, with old country house hotels, large mansions and some of the most expensive real estate in the city, even still to this day. This community is known locally for being safe and a place where children often play outside without fear. Families walk through its greenery at the weekends together and you can still often see hotel guests dressed for events or weddings and crime was at a minimum. It was here, on Pitfoddle Station Road, that the taxi driven by George stopped, possibly to let the passenger out or as a result of the following attack. The reason is not completely clear to the police. It was here that George was brutally attacked by a person who was wielding a cheese wire as a weapon. A cheese wire is a sharp wire with two wooden handles on either side, often found in delis and shops behind the counter. The attack on George actually carried on outside of the taxi as he and his attacker fell out onto the road where two young boys were cycling by and witnessed what they described as George being strangled. George was calling for help and the two young boys took off on their bicycles to the nearby Colts Hotel to call the police for help. 
Remember, this is a time when they didn't have access to a mobile phone. Due to the isolated nature of the road that the attack happened on, the boys would have had at least a five-minute cycle to the hotel to reach a landline. Unfortunately, by the time the police were called and had arrived at the scene, George was already dead, and the attacker had fled the scene, leaving behind the murder weapon, the cheese wire. It was discovered that George's wallet, containing anywhere between £21 to £35, pounds, which has a value of around £80 pounds a day, was missing, along with the taxi fares of an unknown value, and the attacker had indeed robbed him. Police have however stated that they are unsure if the robbery was the original motivation for George's murder. In the days following the murder of George Murdoch, the police launched a murder inquiry, visiting homes and taking thousands of statements from the citizens of Aberdeen and the surrounding Aberdeen Shire. Witnesses, including those who saw George picking the passenger up and the two young boys who witnessed the murder, described the attacker as being between 20 to 30 years old, wearing dark clothing that might be bloodstained after the attack, 5 foot 7 inches, clean-shaven, thin and having short, dark hair. During this inquiry, it came to light that a sighting of a man shortly after the killing at a local chip shop, Mr Chips, which has now been renamed as Urwillie's Braw Fish and Chips, on Great Western Road, seemed to have matched the description of the killer. The employee that served him told the police that the man had blood on his hands and was wearing dark clothing. He was also described as having scratches on his face and a bruised eye, and he was asking the employee for plaster for his hand. The chip shop is around a 20-minute walk from Pitfoddle Station Road, and the attacker would have been walking back towards the centre of town, the direction he'd originally travelled in the taxi. Unfortunately, this sighting has not led to any more information being released publicly, and only one of the six people present at the chip shop that evening has been tracked down. The police and public have noted that the killer seemed prepared to harm or murder someone that evening, considering a cheese wire is not a common item to carry around with you. It's also an item that most people wouldn't even have access to from their homes or even be able to purchase from a shop easily. There have been no other recorded murders in the area using a cheese wire. Others have also noted the brutality and the physicality of the murder, garroting someone and strangling them, particularly someone who had stated he wouldn't fight back if he was robbed, has been a key point of discussion and debate amongst those trying to solve the case. Another point in this case is that during the 1980s, as I said earlier, Aberdeen was at the centre of an oil boom with many workers from all over the UK travelling to the city in order to go offshore for a rotation. It has been speculated by some that the attacker was not a local due to this. However, there are others that argue that someone who wasn't familiar with the city most likely wouldn't choose the quiet, rural suburb of Peter Cooter as their destination, and neither would they know the city well enough to find a chip shop on the outskirts. The murder of George Murdoch quickly sent shockwaves through Aberdeen City and to this day is still spoken about by locals. In 2022, Police Scotland launched an appeal looking to identify a man who was seen wearing an Iron Maiden t-shirt in Wilson Sports Bar on Market Street in Aberdeen in September 2015, who officers believe may be able to help this investigation. No more information has been released about this appeal to the public since. Detective Inspector James Callender from Police Scotland's major investigation team said at the time, Regardless of how much time has passed, we continue to receive a positive response from members of the public from all around the world when we appeal for information about this senseless murder. Following our appeal last year, we now have information about a man we would like to speak to who may be able to assist with information about George's murder. Hopefully, the National Television Appeal will give us the platform to reach someone who may help us identify this man. We continue to receive information about what may have happened to George, and any new information we do receive is thoroughly investigated. In September 2023, 
police revealed that they had isolated what is believed to be the DNA profile of the male killer, which has been described as the most significant development in the case to date. Police are appealing for anyone to come forward, not just with the names of those they may suspect were responsible, but also if they suspect they may be related to the offender, saying, We're looking at sons and daughters who maybe had suspicions over the years that their father was responsible to come forward. We can take a simple DNA swab and we can compare that to give peace of mind to the family to say your father isn't responsible. The investigation team revealed that the DNA had been successfully used to eliminate most people that have come into the murder inquiry over its 40 years. As of September 2023, there's a £50,000 reward for information on the case. Unfortunately, to this day, no one has ever been arrested in connection with the horrific murder of George Murdoch. And Police Scotland's major investigation team continues to review and investigate the case. George's wife, Jessie, unfortunately died in 2004, but George's family have never given up hope that his killer will be caught. As we come to the end of this podcast, I wanted to remember George as a kind family man with a gentle nature who was and still is very loved by his family and friends. They continue to fight for closure and justice for George to this day. Anyone who believes they can assist police is asked to contact 101 or you can email a dedicated inbox at scdholmes, H-O-L-M-E-S, Aberdeen at scotland.pnn.police.uk. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If the platform you are listening on allows your views, I'd be grateful to hear what you think and I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you.